So let me begin by saying that regardless of what you may have heard, Jesus never really died on the cross. It may have appeared to be Jesus, but it wasn't. In fact, God would never debase God's self and take on human form. That just goes against common sense. So it may have looked like Jesus died on the cross, but God simply could not suffer in that way. And this is when you should be running at me screaming heresy. <laughs> that was the heresy that John was confronting when he was writing his gospel. His answer to that is having Jesus say, I thirst. In all of the gospels, Jesus is offered something to drink, but only human beings get thirsty. So we have Jesus saying, I thirst to communicate to his community. No, he really was human. It really was Jesus on the cross. And by the way, that, that just in case it comes up on, on Jeopardy or something like that, the name of that heresy is called docetism or docetism. Looking at the text, in order to fulfill scripture, it says, you know, my throat is parched, Psalm 69. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar, vinegar to drink, a jar of sour wine, like wine vinegar, it, which was, was offered Jesus. It's popular with soldiers because it was cheap. You know, and the joke is after the first glass, doesn't it all taste the same anyway, right? I laugh because I like kombucha. Right? And I also like kombucha because nobody else likes kombucha in my house. So there's always some, but they all said, why would you drink this? It tastes like vinegar, but I like it. Another interesting detail in this story from the Gospel of John is including that the branch is a branch of hyssop. It probably was not a hyssop branch to, in order to reach Jesus's mouth. The other gospels say a, a reed or a stick. A hyssop branch is bendy, right, and short. So it would have been really challenging, but it's included more than likely because it follows with John's theology about who Jesus was. Jesus was a lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The sacrificial lamb, the perfect one. In the Hebrew scriptures, they offered sacrifices of what was of value to them. And for a farmer, what's of most value? Your prized, your prized animal, your prized livestock, the perfect one, the one that would get you the most value at the market or the best price. You don't sacrifice the imperfect one in the, you know, in the same way that we're supposed to give our first fruits over to God, not what's left over. But the hyssop branch is part of the Passover story in Exodus. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. So John is drawing parallels between lambs that are slain for the salvation of God's people in Israel to the lamb of God that will be slain in Jesus Christ for the salvation of all of God's people. This is one of the classic atonement theories that Jesus was the lamb that was slain for us. And this is really interesting. And you're a very theologically astute congregation. So I'm, I'm guessing this isn't new, but for, for those who it might be, there are different atonement theories, classical atonement theories. The church has not decided on one. And atonement, by the way, means it actually has an English root. It means it comes from at one ment at one ment with God. We believe, the church believes that through the cross, we are made at one with God, but we don't agree as to why or how. It's because there are different voices in scripture that, point, that lift up different understandings of what was accomplished in the cross. I think the answer is E, all of the above. Every reason that we can come up with that God, that we could not be in relationship with God or that God could not love us is vanquished in the cross. For those who believe yeah, a debt needs to be paid, Jesus paid it. A ransom needs to be paid to the devil. 
Jesus paid it. The punishment needs to be uh, uh, given to humanity. It is paid through Jesus Christ. A lamb, a perfect sacrifice needs to be made. It is made through, through Jesus. There are other atonement theories, but the, the geniuses of the cross is that all our creativeness and, and the reasons why we don't think God could love us or want to be in relationship with us are vanquished in the cross. So where does that leave us? Grateful, I hope. And from today's passage and this idea of thirst, Jesus being thirsty, asking the question, what are we thirsty for? And I love the imagery at the beginning of Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. Imagine that. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. <laughs> Feel that. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is parched. The idea that you can be surrounded by water and still be thirsty. We can be surrounded by people and still feel lonely. We can be in a room full of, full of people and, and, and feel like there's nobody that we can talk to. We can have it all. Years ago, my family were driving through Princeton and there's some lovely homes in Princeton, the same way there's lovely homes around here. But I jokingly said to the, to the kids, none of the people in, in the, who live in these homes have any problems. Right. I said, you know, all of their marriages are solid. All of their kids are well-adjusted. Nobody's stressed about money. Right? And ha, 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 ha. Right? You can have it all by the world standards and still be miserable. What do we thirst for? Augustine put it this way. Our, our souls are restless until they find their rest in thee, O oh God. And people will exhaust every other option before looking to God. And I, and I, I have said this many times and I'll probably say it again forever. At the beginning of, COVID, of COVID, if you didn't know what your go-to coping mechanisms were, you know what they are now. You know, for some it was alcohol. For some, it was the refrigerator. Some, you know, you got cleaning and organizing. Some, you know, exercising. You know, what, what are the things that we turn to? And I would say there are some things that are of God and some things that are not of God, but we're at, we should be keenly aware of what those things are. What do we thirst for? Our souls are restless until they find the rest in thee, O oh God. I get to work with, with pastors and there's a lot of weariness right now. And I recognize in myself that I have like been waiting for, I've been afraid to, like we're talking about like the end of COVID. But every time we've, we've said that there's been another boom in the gut. And so I've noticed in myself that I'm afraid to get my hopes up. And it's hard to plan because, you know, the, the rug can just be ripped out from, from under us again. And the spiritual insight of the week was just the recogn recognition that it's not going to get any easier. And it's living a life, filling our spiritual cups so that we can pour ourselves out. We need to be really intentional about doing the things that fill our, up our cups so that we can pour ourselves out because ministry isn't gonna get any easier. Life is, has always been rough. And we would like to think we are going through a rough spell. 
but it's going to be tough. And we need to build up in ourselves resilience, creating the habits that help fill up our spiritual cups so that we can be pouring ourselves out. We need to be intentional about it. I recently heard that we don't rise to the level of our aspirations, but we fall to the level of our habits. We need to be intentional. And I also want to say that we are all wired differently personality wise, some of you are really, really good. You're disciplined every day, you, you know, because you should. And there are those of us who are wired. We do it when we feel that we need it. I went to a conference years ago where I was, you know, always felt guilty because I, because I'm not one of those people who can do things every day just because we should. And he's, and this, his name is Roy Oswald. He's part of the Almond Institute. I don't know, but he was, he, he was a name. He was a guru. And he blessed me by telling me, it's okay. When you feel off kilter, when you feel un, off center, then you, then you pick up, you open your spiritual toolbox and you do what you need to do to get centered again. And then you take it for granted until, you know, and that's, and that's okay. That's okay. But in these tough times, we need to be intentional about doing the things that fill us not with joy. I said not, and then I said with joy. To do the things, to notice the things that fill you with joy. What are those things for you? Taking a Sabbath, taking a Sabbath once a day at least not watching the news is okay for your spirit. The rest of us will carry it for it, carry the load for you on that day. It's okay to take that break. Prayer, meditation, taking walks outside, exercise, music, the arts, Spiritual friendships, jour journaling, reading scripture, reading books by others who are on the spiritual journey are some of the ways that I make space for God to fill my cup so that I can pour myself out for others. We need to be really intentional. At, I have a handful of uh, coaching clients. I coach other pastors. When COVID hit, it all turned to self-care. What are you doing? Because coaching is goal-oriented. What do you want to, want to accomplish in your ministry and planning for that and, and taking those baby steps to accomplish it? When COVID hit, it was all about self-care and it's still about self-care for all of us. Be intentional about doing the things that fill you up so that you can pour yourselves out for the world. And I really think, I, I think, being a follower of Jesus Christ is just living in abundant love. It's just loving on the world in God's name. <laughs> but anybody who's in any kind of committed relationship, you know that love is hard. But that's really what it is. But to do that, we need to be doing this work so that we can do this work. What do you thirst for? As a reminder, God does not call you to anything to then desert you to do it all on your own. God is with you. God will restore your soul till your cup is overflowing. Look to God every day. Take it one day at a time trusting that God will give you what you need to meet the needs of this day so that you can pour yourself out in love for the world so that God's kingdom might reign on earth as it is in heaven. We're in this together. Let us be about the business of building one another up in great love and in Jesus' name.
Amen.